For those of you who don't really know me, one of my all-time favorite cartoons is none other than South Park. So, when it was revealed that Matt and Trey themselves were helping to create a South Park role-playing game, I just had to check it out. The game is an absolute blast to play and features a rather short and easy platinum trophy. But dear god, if this isn't the most inappropriate trophy list in existence, I don't know what else could be. So, join me today on the journey to obtain perhaps the raunchiest platinum trophy out there. The game begins with a bit of character customization. Also, we'll be playing on hardcore, because I'm hard. And overconfident. After punching a child, we befriend Little Butters, which introduces us to one of several types of collectibles. Speaking of collectibles, this game is loaded with them. We have to befriend 120 people, find 30 Chin Pokemon, and find or purchase about 68 weapons and 88 pieces of clothing. Oh, and we can't forget the fact that 25 of the game's 51 trophies are considered missable. In Cartman's backyard, we earn our first trophy by accepting the name Douchebag for our character. What a great start. Technically no, but yes is the default option. Are you sure you want to keep the name Douchebag? Ugh, fine. I will take the name Douchebag. Very well, Douchebag. Only because it's a trophy for accepting your fate and choosing the name Douchebag yourself. We also pick the Jew class because it's honestly pretty strong, and it'll lead to a later trophy. So, you don't have to beat the entire game as a Jew, but we're going to play through as a Jew anyway because it's honestly one of the better classes. We do some tutorial battles. I'm almost surprised he didn't say to shove the staff up his asshole. Clyde let the elves take the stick of truth. <laughs> and we begin entering garages and collecting Chin Pokemon. We beat up the Mongorian kids in a the Tower of Peace, unlocking our first summon, which is a powerful attack that can kill every non-boss enemy on screen. Also inside the tower, I collected my fifth Chin Pokemon for a trophy. There is a Chin Pokemon here, so let's grab him. It's Pikachu! Except it's also not Pikachu. And while clearing a bunch of rats out of Skeeter's bar, I blocked every attack in a non-tutorial battle for another trophy. Oh! What's that trophy for? Blocked every enemy attack in a single non-tutorial battle. Nice! Despite being a Jew, we found Jesus at the church. Twice, actually. Which nets us a trophy and another summon. I know how to beat the game, so I know where he is. Call me once per day with this, but I can't help against bosses. They're scary. Come find me again. There we go. There's Are We Cool. While battling a drunk homeless person, I threw a turd of my own creation at him for another easy trophy. Might as well knock that trophy out while we can. Cosplaying as Walter White, we wipe out a group of meth heads for one of many missable combat based trophies. Police brutality. I'm not even a cop. Easy enough. Hey, there we go. We got our trophy. We meet Al Gore. I am super serial. Has this kid actually been in more than one episode of the show? I legitimately can't remember. Oh, and be very careful with the houses you enter. Okay. Well, well, that was nice to see. I'm sure that's going to be positive for YouTube right now. We're now speedrunning our way to demonetization. Oh, yes it is. Okay. Soon enough, we learn our first magic attack, and then we're tasked with rescuing Craig from detention. I don't know about 10 minutes. As another note, there's a full game spanning trophy where we have to complete the game without a partner being dead at the end of any battles. They are allowed to go down and be revived though. I think this was my first death. We killed each other. 
During the fight against the boss hall monitor, I blocked a channel attack for the first time. You need to do this five times for a trophy, and only a few enemy types have a channel attack. And by defeating the boss while wearing freckles, we grab another combat trophy. Oh! Is that the trophy... one of the trophies I wanted? There we go! While invading the Inn of the Giggling Donkey, I knocked out two combat trophies for scoring 100 perfect attacks. Oh! Trophy! And blocking 100 attacks. More trophies, wonderful. We save Princess Kiani and manage to fart on 10 knocked out enemies for a trophy. Oh! Trophy. Not even sure what that one was for. We <clears throat> soil our pants during a boss fight for a trophy. There it goes. Jeez, I was worried there. That would not unlock for me. I was worried. And then we are welcomed into the KKK. Yes, that's actually a trophy. But don't worry, it gets a lot worse in later streams. Trophy. And with that, the first stream ends with an alien abduction. You can probably guess some of the events that happen next. The second stream begins with some battles against the aliens, and this is where the inappropriateness really starts to shine through. I had to adopt a sensor bar for the first time in my streams due to this portion of the game. And let's not forget that one of our attacks is the Circum Scythe, because reasons. We then have a somewhat challenging boss fight against the alien captain. Defeating him crashes the ship, and we get a story trophy for finishing the first day. Aliens are not an uncommon thing in this series. While using our newfound powers to explore South Park, I grabbed my 15th Chin Pokemon, the halfway point, for a trophy. That's 10! 10. 10 down! Oh! And a Kindergartner! Alright, that's three out of the six Kindergarteners and a Chin Pokemon. Day two's story progresses when we willingly go with the elves to meet their leaders. This gives us access to Kyle's house and his garage key, granting us another missable trophy. Okay, got that. And we got a rooster. Not a rooster, but whatever it's called. We knock out a few side quests, including returning Mr. Slave's, um, let's call it a package, to unlock another summon. Party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. The Rawhide Whip. That is one of our summons. Master Sensei Randy Marsh teaches us a new magic attack. We infiltrate a secret government meeting about the release date of Shrek 5, and we're introduced to a new type of enemy. Groups of people with radical political differences that can't be mentioned on YouTube without being demonetized, but they're now in zombie form. We also do the coffee and cigarette dance to befriend the goths for a trophy. Okay, yeah, I didn't miss a single button there, so you better be happy with me. He's pretty goth. He's pretty goth, right? Yeah, that was pretty good. I felt his pain. All right, new kid, you've officially proven yourself. Yeah, just tell us where you're Excellent. We'll be there. We then rescue several talking pieces of poo. Max out a skill tree for a somewhat delayed trophy. Uh, fully upgrade Circumscythe. Whirling Doom wouldn't be bad to have the extra upgrade for. Ooh, we have a perk here. What do I want? Yeah, let's do that. Mastery. And get our last summon from Mr. Hanky. Surprisingly, getting all those isn't a trophy. Talking to his wife. Wonderful. We have our last summon. From here, we begin our attack on the school to recover the Stick of Truth, netting the trophy for finding half the total number of friends along the way. While loading up a save, the game actually crashed on me, which was unfortunate. Oh, that's great! I then managed to grab a rather annoying trophy, where you have to knock out three enemies with a single attack outside of battle. This is really the only good place to do this one consistently, so I definitely recommend knocking it out right here. There we go! We got it! Annoying trophy out of the way. I am happy. 
The school is also the only place to grab another obnoxious combat trophy. You have to let gingers bite you three times in a single playthrough without blocking those particular attacks. The attack they do each time is random, so this trophy might unlock quickly, or it might take 20 grueling minutes. There we go, there we go! Is that enough? Yes! Okay, you know what? Load the game. At the end of the school, you will want to make a backup save in another slot, as you'll be forced to choose which faction you wish to side with and fight the opposing leader. That way you can reload that save to fight the other leader without needing to do another half playthrough. You're, gonna be sorry, new kid. you're a problem here. Kyle, you're the enemy here. Get out of my so, I, I would rather piss off Kyle. Because Cartman could make us eat our own parents. It's then discovered that this was all for nothing as Clyde already took the stick and built his own army and fortress. So Clyde has a massive army of people. Of every group. Our parents hunt us down to ground us and that's it for stream number two and day number two. So yeah, they will give you a very different dialogue if they manage to catch you, which is really, really cool. I have no problem with that. I think that's cool. The third stream, leading us to the second in-game night, begins with fighting some underpants gnomes, unlocking the trophy for using magic to counter five channel attacks. And now we get one of the most obscene trophies in the game, but I'll just let my commentary explain this one for me. To me. Of course I will, darling. We're okay for the moment, but once we get outside of this vent, things will change. There we go. You see nothing now. We literally have to watch this for 60 seconds. Because someone, I guess it was Matt or Trey or both, thought this was a good idea. We're gonna sit here for 60 seconds. Man, that censorship is gonna work perfectly though. You can't even tell what's going on back there. I'm proud of that ability. The thing works well. A small locket. But yeah, they, they make you do this. It's not the most offensive trophy in the game. But it's up there. It's not the most offensive. There's one that's worse. Oh, you thought we were done with the sensor bar? Nope, I had to add a brand new one that blocked the entire screen because you have to complete a boss fight underneath your parents while they bang it out. The things this is making me say. We awaken the next morning, grab a trophy for befriending our father, and now dad is our friend because you can't get him until you've made 50 friends. And another trophy for finding half of the outfits in the game. Shopaholic. I think that is for getting half of the outfits, yep. I spent some time running around South Park to complete some side quests and get all my summons back, and with all six partners available, I farted on all of them for a trophy. Back to the main story yet again, we have to recruit some new followers to assault Clyde's fortress, which unfortunately includes the girls. Before they will help us though, we need to take a trip to the abortion clinic, and we also get a makeover. So now we come to perhaps the most absurd part of the game so far. First, we have to break the abortion vacuum by clenching our sphincter. Here we go. I suspect that it could cause problems nowadays. I don't know if it will, but it, it's hidden, so no one's going to see it now. Wow, no. Then we actually have to perform one on Randy. I'm pretty sure that this isn't allowed to be on YouTube. Why they feel the need... I guess I know why they felt the need to do this, because it's Matt and Trey, of course they would go this far. Now we're fighting aborted Nazi zombie fetuses. And here's the worst trophy in the game, perhaps of all time. Now for the arguably most offensive trophy in the game, you have to fart on the corpse of an aborted Nazi zombie fetus. Because someone thought that was a good idea for a trophy. And if that wasn't bad enough, here's the boss fight for the area. We're fighting a giant aborted fetus. 
because of course we are. The next task is for the girls. It's to get a document, which has been written in a strange language, from the kingdom to the north, translated into English. So we need a passport photo, resulting in a fight against a pedophile that I won't show on YouTube since your character has to strip prior to the fight. We befriend some adorable woodland critters celebrating Christmas. Alright, we get 12 friends out of that. Literally 10% of the list is done through that. 10% of it is done through that. And then enter the kingdom to the north, which turns out to be 8-bit Canada. We can now go to Canada. So Canada is a whole nother type of game, almost. It's in super old school, like, 16 or 8-bit or whatever this is called. Which is hilarious. Make sure to spare the bishop during the fight against him in order to add him as a friend. Why do you have those? Bless you, my son. It'll be our secret. Wow, good thing I saved these. Oh, come on, dude. We should take his balls anyway. So we, have we even get to train with Terrence and Philip to learn the ultimate magic spell, the Nagasaki. These three pedophiles from Alberta will have their way with you unless you damage them all. Uh-oh. Three pedophiles from Alberta? Does Alberta have a lot of pedophiles or something? Is that a thing that's that's realistic? And don't make the mistake I did here. Make absolutely sure to fart on this particular character in the cave. Back in the good old US of A, we spend $175 to become David Hasselhoff. The girls agree to help us, and we befriend the crab people to complete another trophy. Great, trophy. So, it's time to begin the final battle for the Stick of Truth. Beat up Clyde! There are several intense fights while climbing Clyde's tower, nothing we can't deal with though. Craig, no one likes you. Like, literally no one likes you. And we end the stream as soon as we meet Mr. Slave. As we head into the final stream, I probably should have mentioned a few things about the final assault on Clyde's fortress, but I'm too lazy to edit them in earlier. You need to make sure you have the makeover outfit in your inventory. You need to have purchased the Hasselhoff face. You need to be infected with active dire aids, not the cured version. And you should also make sure to purchase as many health items as you can carry because this is a fairly long segment of the game. For the final stream, I actually started by reloading a previous save I made because I somehow forgot to fart on the Minister of Montreal. Though apparently I also forgot about the Mayor of South Park, but you can get to her at any point in time. Now we must enter Mr. Slave's Harry Anus, which contains several missable friends, items, and a trophy that easily could have been called Enslaveception, though Inside Joke is still acceptable. So, we're going to summon Mr. Slave inside of Mr. Slave for a trophy. And the bomb gets a little visit from the Coat Hanger Fairy. We commit a possible hate crime during this fake-out final boss fight. Big Bad Government Guy takes the stick. We spend our $500 for a trophy. I'm also going to buy some Q- Oh! Trophy! And with our makeover outfit equipped, begin the final battle against none other than Princess Kiani. It goes very well until the princess drinks the royal green goop. The fight becomes a bit time consuming as our partners are slowly removed from combat and the princess constantly revives herself. Cartman declares that the only chance for victory now is to break the gentleman's oath that we swore at the beginning of the game. And breaking this oath will earn us a whopping six trophies. All right, that's trophy one. Two. Back to normal. Three. The Dragonborn must have farted on a princess's balls. Princess Kenny needs a boyfriend. Princess Kenny needs its own show. That's four. Five. One more, I think. Unless I didn't see it pop. Nope, there it is. Oh, and our character speaks for the only time in the game if you were interested. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> That's Cartman's line. 
With the main story completed, it's time to go back and knock out the remaining miscellaneous trophies, starting by selling 300 junk items. Next up is farting on a dog while in gnome form. You're inside your rotten breath. There we go. Trophy. Followed by defeating 20 enemies with Cartman's ass. Hey! There's the Cartman trophy! Then we defeated three enemies in a single battle with our partner knocked out, which is best done with the respawning wolves in the forest. Okay, that didn't count. Oh, it did. Perfect. Now we have to find all the remaining collectibles, including purchasing lots of weapons and outfits. Unfortunately, the cleanup brings us to what is usually considered the hardest fight in the game against Al Gore, which I failed and came back to later. Collecting the last Chin Pokemon nets us a trophy. There's Chin Pokalypse. Which is immediately followed by two others, and I honestly think that there was something glitched out in this area. You guys can be the judge of that, though. I never friended the crab people? I am really, really confused. So it turns out that Al Gore actually isn't all that hard to beat, as a single Nagasaki will eliminate all of his guards and do a ton of damage to him. I never knew that, so thank you to whoever in the chat helped me out on that. That nearly killed him. Whoever suggested this strategy, thank you. You just made my life a lot easier. I never knew you could do that. You could beat him that easily. That was so easy. Somehow I hadn't yet farted on 100 people for that easy trophy, which was quickly followed up by farting on 25 animals or the same animal 25 times. We now have one last boss fight against Man Bear Pig, earning the last pieces of equipment for our troubles. So that side quest is done. We get another weapon off of him. And we get the full arsenal trophy. Of course there has to be a trophy for overloading your bowels in three separate fights. You can take a large mana potion here. There it is! As well as letting Kenny die ten times. Would have been funnier, yet more annoying if it was 126 times. There we go. Hey, there it is! For the final trophy, we reload a save from just before the final battle in the school, and the rest is history. Yeah, I chose to beat up Kyle on my first playthrough. Because <laughs> I, I thought it would be more entertaining to to beat up Kyle over Cartman. Because Cartman's the best character ever. Okay, there it is, Elven Hero. And Platinum Trophy. We are done. In the end, I love the South Park games. I can't wait for the third one that's coming out soon. And I greatly enjoyed going back and getting this Platinum again. It can be done in 10 to 15 hours, less if you play on easy and don't manage to miss things like I did. And really, aside from the vast number of missable trophies, the Platinum is pretty easy. It's 100% worth playing. Just don't play it around your ultra-conservative 80-year-old grandmother or you might get the belt. But in all seriousness, this is definitely one of, if not the most inappropriate trophy lists that I have ever seen. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments what is the most inappropriate individual trophy or entire list that you've seen.